so during the development of pores we study that the there are dorsal lateral part of alar lamina gets converted to form thicken structure and that thicken structure is known as rhombic limb and we also study that this rhombic limb uh, becomes specialized to form the cerebellum so that is what i have written the whole cerebellum develops from the rhombic limb so in today's video we have to understand development of cerebellum basically how this rhombic limb gets converted to form the whole cerebellum so first let's discuss about the formation of cerebellar plate and its derivative so just like uh, so this is a basal lamina this is the ventral part of alar lamina and this is the rhombic limb and this is the midline now here see that this rhombic limb undergoes growth and also that this rhombic limb is moving towards the midline and the movement towards the midline is known as medial movement see when movement done towards the midline uh, this is known as medial movement so if you see that this rhombic limb is growing and this is a uh, moving medially so now what happens is that see so here that uh, due to a uh, growth of the rhombic limb and a medial movement finally the two rhombic limbs fuse with each other as a result of the fusion of the two rhombic limbs so here cerebellar plate is formed so therefore that i have written that uh, due to the growth of rhombic limb and medial movement of both the rhombic limbs fusion of two rhombic limbs done and this fusion of two rhombic limbs uh, leads to formation of cerebellar plate so now here you see that this cerebellar plate is increasing in size now so here this is the cerebellar plate now here see that in this cerebellar plate so here two three swellings are made total two lateral swellings and one midline swelling so therefore that i have written that two lateral swellings made and one midline swelling made so now see that so this is a fissure now this part of the fissure is above the fissure and below so if you see that and here and this is a cavity of fourth ventricle now this part of the developing cerebellum is not extending into the cavity of the fourth ventricle whereas that is a pink color light pink colored portion of the developing cerebellum extending into the cavity of fourth ventricle and that part which extends into the cavity of fourth ventricle is called intraventricular part and that does not extend is the extra vascular part and both the extra vascular and intra sorry sorry ha huh? that this would be the extra ventricular both the extra ventricular and intra ventricular parts they are separated by a fissure basically transverse fissure so sorry friends so this would be the extra ventricular part this would be intra ventricular part so again so this extra ventricular part does not extend into the cavity of the fourth ventricle whereas the intra ventricular part extends into the cavity of the developing fourth ventricle so therefore that i have written that uh, due to the further growth of the developing cerebellum the cerebellum divided into two parts extra ventricular and intra ventricular parts so here extra ventricular part does not extend into the cavity of the fourth ventricle whereas the intra ventricular part does so now again what is a transverse fissure you already know that fissure which separates extra ventricular part from the intra ventricular part is a transverse fissure so therefore i have written that the line separating the extra ventricular part and intra ventricular parts from each other is known as transverse fissure so now again this is the further development if you see that so here from this to this so here again that these two lateral swellings which are there so here they have been converted into two cerebellar swellings and the midline swelling which was there it gets converted into a so here vermis and the part of the developing cerebellum between the vermis and the cerebellar hemisphere is known as paravermis so here basically these are the derivatives which are obtained from the extra ventricular part and again that this is a pink colored portion is the intraventricular part 
now again if you see that in the case of intraventricular part that here that is intraventricular part converted into two floccules and also between the two floccules there is a nodule so and two floccules and one nodule that together form floculonodular node so therefore that this uh, floculonodular lobe obtained from this intraventricular part and these two cerebellar hemispheres fermis and parafermis obtained from intraventricular part so therefore that I have written the two lateral swellings develop into cerebellar hemispheres and a medial part or medial swelling develops into fermis so see so here that this is the midline swelling initially and these are the two lateral swellings so here also same now here that these two lateral swellings develop into cerebellar hemisphere and the midline swelling develops into vermis and the portion of developing cerebellum between the vermis and cerebellar hemisphere is a paraphermis and again now an intraventricular part converted into nodule and two floccules and two floccules and nodule that together form floculonodular lobe so therefore floculonodular lobe her develop or form from intraventricular part and what is paraphermis as I already mentioned the part of intraventric sorry extraventricular part lying between cerebellar hemispheres and fermis called paraphermis that's all all these portions get from this diagram so again see that this is a further a growth of a developing cerebellum so now again fissures are made so now what is anterolateral fissure that this anterolateral fissure so here separates this anterior lobe from the posterior lobe and again what is posterolateral fissure the fissure that separates this posterior lobe from the floculonodular lobe so therefore that I written that due to the further growth of the developing cerebellum fissures form an anterolateral fissure separates the anterior lobe from the posterior lobe whereas posterolateral fissure separates the posterior lobe from the floculonodular lobe so that's about so first I discussed how is the cerebellar plate form so first of all that due to the me growth and the medial migration of the two rhombic leaf and finally the fusion of the two rhombic leaf leads to formation of the cerebellar plate now and first this cerebellar plate so here divided into so here lateral and medial swellings and then into extraventricular and intraventricular part and from that extraventricular part so here that is cerebellar hemispheres form vermis form paravermis form and from the intraventricular part that this floculonodular lobe form and here fissures form transverse fissure and also anterolateral fissure so that anterior posterior or middle and innermost anterior posterior and floculonodular lobes are formed so that's all about the derivatives of cerebellar plate and formation of cerebellar plate so now about structure so here structure cerebellar plate so now uh, from this you will have to understand the formation of cerebellar cortex and all these cortical cerebellar cortex layers you will have to study in histopathology histology also microanatomy of cerebellum also so now see that uh, so it also contains so here marginal layer the mental layer now you see that in the mental layer there are two types of cells so so all the pink colored cells which I have marked they are migrating from mental layer into marginal layer whereas that is black colored cells they are not migrating now you see that due to the mar that these developing cells of mental layer they are migrating into marginal layer as a result so here cerebellar cortex is formed and these remaining cells just which don't migrate that they got converted into four nuclei so if vestigial globus in body form and dentate nuclei so therefore all these portions I have written there uh, due to the migration of the developing cells of the mental layer into marginal layer the cerebellar cortex form so here cerebellar cortex form and the remaining cells of mental layer which don't migrate to the marginal layer converted to the following nuclei so here dentate nucleus in body form nucleus vestigial nucleus and globo and globus nucleus that's all about development 
and here that and later that the cerebellar cortex also gets divided into three layers molecular layer purkinje layers and all these things you have to study in histology so that's all so once again that this anterior lobe posterior lobe basically the part of cerebellar hemisphere vermis paravermis all obtained from extraventricular part and only that this speculonal ruler lobe obtained from intraventricular part and this fissures found due the further growth of the developing cerebellum and here cerebellar cortex formed due the developing cells of the mental layer and all the nuclei also formed due the developing cells of the mental layer so that's all about development of cerebellum and thank you